Hey everybody, Jason Burmis here, and I am coming at you from South Carolina. I'm going to be speaking, like yet again, if you follow the channel, you know, I'm going to be speaking over at the Reawaken America tour about NASA, transhumanism, and the truth about Elon Musk. And on this road trip, I was able to watch the new Netflix series, The Pentaverate. The Pentaverate. And Here's the deal. Before I even get into whether I liked it or not, okay, or what I did like about it and what I hated about it and what it's really all about, number one, this is going to be spoiler filled. So if you don't want to know what happens in this series or what it's about, um, other than the trailer, which clearly shows it's about a secret society that rules the world, probably not the broadcast for you. But out of the gates, I want to say it is the best thing that Mike Myers has done since Austin Powers. 100%, okay? Without a doubt. And the reason for that is because it really goes back to old school Mike Myers playing a multitude of characters. And the Pentaveret, it's, or the Pentaveret, the Pentaveret itself, it actually is almost 30 years in the making. What do I mean it's almost 30 years in the making? So if you check this out right here, you'll see um, that So I Married an Axe Murderer came out all the way in 1993. And I've got to gotta tell you, number one, I think it is an underrated classic. I think it's an uh, excellent, excellent movie. And people should really be more aware of it. It's funny. It's lighthearted. It's that mid-range romantic comedy that even a guy can like, right? And he plays his um, Scottish father, okay? And at one point, he is uh, talking to somebody else. Again, this is back in 1993. I was 14 years old. I'd certainly never heard of secret societies, etc. And he's talking about the Pentaveret. And obviously, it's kind of an Illuminati reference, right? So he talks about it for a while. It's a funny movie to this day. I listened to uh, Bay City Rollers Saturday night because of that scene where Mike Myers is kind of walking around and singing the song as the old Scottish man. So without further ado, uh, let's get into the video, everybody. And I want to remind you, if you are watching this on YouTube, hopefully, first of all, the connection is pretty good and that everybody uh, can see and hear this. But... Remember, Rockfin, Rockfin, Rockfin. The crypto crash is real, guys. Um, and again, I, I've been talking about the fact that, yes, you can support me here and I want you to, uh, but we're going to have to find another way. I mean, these trips that I'm taking, you may think they're like vacation-like, but really I'm trying to uh, connect with people and then get this information out to as many people as possible. That's why I'm doing this. So I want to broadcast from the road. I want to grow. Um Rockfin is one way to do that, but we got to find other ways. We're on Podbean as well. I want to remind you, and if you're not subscribed, please do. And remember, I am a documentary filmmaker. Loose Change, Final Cut, Fabled Enemies, Invisible Empire, A New World Order to Find, and Shade the Motion Picture are all free right here, right now. Okay, Pentaveret. So, obviously, you, you see the robes, and they're very much based in the Illuminati, and the joke is, but they're nice. Okay, number one. This gets into every single conspiracy trope that you can imagine, right or wrong, correct or incorrect, which is frustrating, right? But aliens. Aliens are the only thing I, I can think of that were really stayed away from. And I kind of wonder why he did that, um, because obviously, quote unquote, aliens have been what I think is a large part uh, of the disinformation, okay, within the quote-unquote conspiracy world. And um, I think that a lot of that stuff is aggrandized, is uh, Hollywoodized, right? It's very much entertainment. And that's totally out in this, okay? So that's totally out. So who are the Pentaveret, okay? Well, you got Lord Lordington. Uh, you got Dimitri. Uh, you got probably my favorite good character in this, uh, Shep Gordon, who is Alice, Coopicer, uh, Alice Cooper's ex-manager, right? Funny stuff. I, I, you know, they, they did a good job. And then they have a guy over here on the right uh, named Bruce Baldwin. And he is a media mogul that started tabloids. And later on, they reveal, you know, he distorted the truth, right? 
Um, but remember, the Pentaverate are supposed to be nice. So he becomes this character that gets into fake news, but he saved us from Y2K. Y2K was real. And now they have an AI that was created by a former member. Okay, and via the AI, this is really one of the worst things throughout because there's some really good stuff in here. Number one, it's funny. Okay, it is a funny, funny, um, it's, like I said, it's the best thing he's done in a while. The jokes are there. They're mostly juvenile dick and fart jokes, unfortunately, um, but they work, right? I mean, wasn't that what My Mike Myers' uh, Austin Powers was? Mostly dumb juvenile sex jokes, right? So it works on that level. And, and one of the former members, again, creates this AI. And, and it's really the end, the last couple episodes I have the most problem with. Now, they do have, again, as I said, an ad hoc Alex Jones character, Rex Smith. You can see in the thumbnail here in the bottom that the truth battle uh, is very much of the InfoWars style font, right? He's not in it that much. And other than the gravelly voice, really, you know, it's just something to, you know, put in lizards and chemtrails and nonsense. But he talks about a thing called the Meadows, right? So the Meadows is kind of like a mashup of the Bilderberg group. And then you could argue the Eyes Wide Shut parties, right? This had a lot of nods to Kubrick. One of the things I really, really loved about it. Um, I mean, there was just so much. First of all, they used the Eyes Wide Shut music. Um, the orgy sequence was actually kind of hilarious as long as you don't mind a lot of dong. If you can handle a lot of dawn, guys, it's funny, okay? And, you know, again, he did really good work with this. So you have the Kubrick reference, and not just, you know, conspiracy Kubrick. Uh, there's one scene in particular when they're getting into the AI part, and it's uh, an ode to 2001, A Space Odyssey. Of course, they put the moon landing stuff in there, and we're going to get to what I disliked about it also in a moment. Because, listen, far from perfect, far from perfect, but what is, right? And, and... The thing is that you could argue that, you know, he's he's having a go at everybody, but at the same time, you have to understand that he must be uh, pretty knowledgeable, oh, didn't want to do that one, of these kind of subjects, or uh, it wouldn't be there. The Baldwin character in particular, right? Let's go back to him. Uh, the Baldwin character in particular really reminded me of a Robert Maxwell. And one of the aspects of this show is that everybody um, dies in the real world before they uh, are, a, you know, one of the five main pentaveret members, because there's like a whole organization built around them, right? And, and again, with the Kubrick stuff, they built in the uh, the piano keys, uh, the orgy stuff, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, the supposed moon landing stuff, a lot of great stuff there. So I did like that. Now, let's go through all these different characters right here. Um, and as you can see, uh, first of all, it's Ken Scarborough. He's the main guy, right? And here, here's my feeling on this. He's a mainstream media guy who's doing fluff pieces and he's got to get a big story, right? And they throw, uh, the pentaverate his way. Okay. And he's totally dismissive of all this stuff. So it's good that they kind of show that these people are being naive, right? In that manner. But then later on, you know, when you when you get to the uh, trope characters, right, you have Lord Lordington, pretty accurate, right? A lot of these people at the top, Prince Bernard of the Netherlands, uh, for instance, Queen Beatrix attended, attends, you know, these are um, those type of characters. Uh, then you have uh, Mishu Ivanov, I guess it's not Dimitri, sorry, that's right, the Demetrius Protocols is what I was uh, confusing that with. So he's like the lone Russian. Uh, here's Shep Gordon, and, and like I said, he's a fun character. You know, he's like the Hollywood guy. They don't show Baldwin. Uh, Jason Eccleston is the one that created the uh, uh, the AI, and they have some weird sex jokes. Now, Anthony uh, lands down. You take a look at him. Okay, now this is the conspiracy guy, and this is what's upsetting. Is like, here's the main trope, right? And they always try to push this. All these people that believe in conspiracy conspiracy theories believe in everything, right? So they throw the QAnon sense in there. Sasquatch, of course, 
has to uh, have a big part. And if you go back to my interview with the guy from the New York Times, like, I don't believe, I don't care if you believe in UFOs and Bigfoot and blah, blah. It's like, no, nah, man, we're talking about geopolitics. We're talking about reality. And the thing is, when you look at this, it, and, which blows my mind, you look at this thing and he's actually right a lot of the time. You know, he's, a, you know, they throw in what about her emails at the very end on top of it with this guy. And he, but you know, he's got, a bumper sticker of NASA lies. Of course, uh, jet fuel doesn't melt steel beams. That's on there. But he's a smelly guy. He's lonely. He feels like he's been kept down by these people. I don't feel any such things. I'm a winner. I'm here to win. Okay? No one's holding me down. That's nonsense. And I've never portrayed myself as the victim. Okay? That, that's ridiculous. Uh, I'm hopefully not just like a smelly old man with no relationships. Right? But that's what they want you to believe. That's a big problem. Now, on the flip of that side, when Baldwin's plan is revealed, he's going to sell the AI to the highest bidder because it's going to be the ultimate truth aggregator, right? And that way you can lie. They already do this, right? And the other thing I didn't like about it was there were people like in the secret societies, you know, of course, the king and queen and prince and Merkel and even Musk. And the undertown, underground tunnel system these guys have is the Musk. So he didn't lay off Elon Musk. I like that. I like that a lot. But when uh, Bruce Baldwin, the bad guy, goes to sell the AI, almost everybody leaves. And who's bidding on it? Oh, it's Putin. Another one of these tropes. Another one of these falsehoods. And to be quite frank, although there were laughs in the last episode, a lot of them, the way they end it is just absurd. You see... They get Ken Scarborough because they need an AI. You see, man has to merge with machines, okay? But they want a newsman. It didn't matter that he was duped. They want a newsman with that power who's nice. And this is Ken Scarborough, okay? So he merges with the AI. So ultimately at the end, it's this weird, diverse, transhumanist approved message, uh, which I did not care for. But again, still the best thing, Mike Myers uh, has put out there in quite some time. So I recommend it. Go check it out. Let me know what you thought about the review. Thumbs it up, subscribe and share. And remember guys, it's not about left or right. It's always about right and wrong. And you kind of have to take this one into the perspective that yeah, it's making fun of most of it. It tries to make a message about truth, but at the end of the day, it pushes a diversity transhumanist agenda.